I mean, we've had a lot of tornadoes these past couple of years, so I feel like the, the community's car. kind of come together car. and figured it out. Get in the car! Get in the car! Get, get me closer. They're getting worse down this way. I just hit something. Tornado Alley has moved, and I've found America's newest tornado hotspot. It lies along a highway in southern Mississippi. This isn't the Midwest. This isn't Oz. There are no ruby slippers here, just red clay and pine trees snapping like matchsticks in the night. They heard the tornado in the distance. It was just shredding this force. They hear the, the limbs snapping, trees being yanked from their roots, being tossed. They say it roared, sounded like a train two miles away. And it was that loud. Yes, sir. So when you hear that, at, and it's dark still, I assume, mm -hmm. that has to be, let's get out of the way. I don't want to make sure we're in his way. That had to be kind of a, an intimidating. Yeah, it was nerve wracking. Since 2013, more strong and violent tornadoes have ripped through this relatively small part of the country than any other. Ooh, we barely made it. Where is this your place here? Yeah, we barely made it. <clears throat> Ooh, that tree. Ooh. It scared me to death. Forget everything you think you know about Tornado Alley that romanticized stretch of prairie land where storm chasers roam, and the sky performs cinematic violence. That mythology, it's old news. Largest tornado on the ground, coming into Hattiesburg. They say Tornado Alley has packed up and moved east, like some great atmospheric migration. The monsters have found new hunting grounds, and I'm at ground zero. You see it? Come across. Oh, wow. The most tornado prone place in America isn't in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. When the wind blew out, that's when I jumped out of bed. It's right here, along Highway 98 in Mississippi, where the storms slip in through the pines at midnight, where destruction doesn't announce itself with the courtesy of daylight or warning. Oh my God. It's hard to In this video, I'll explain what the science is saying about this shift and why tornadoes here are even more deadly and dangerous coming. than the ones We're our coming. grandparents told us about. Recording. The tornado will be at what Patty's heard by 305 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah, work of all that's good. But our story starts on February 10th, 2013. Hattiesburg, Mississippi is being cut in half by a powerful EF4 tornado. Oh my God, it's huge. At 5.03 p.m., the tornado touches down west-southwest of West Hattiesburg. It doesn't waste time. It widens fast, like it's hungry. Listen to that thing. plowing through suburban streets, peeling roofs off of homes, ripping power lines from the sky, snapping trees like breadsticks. A half mile wide beast, bulldozing its way through people's Sunday evening. It narrows again as it slams into Oak Grove High School. Cars tossed like kids' toys, this one ending up on the baseball diamond. Yeah, it's green. Go, go. The storm went house to house like an angry debt collector. Hundreds of homes and businesses either gone or gutted. Neighborhoods torn open, strip malls turned inside out. No mercy, no pattern, just destruction, block after block. Before we go any further, I want to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Insta360. I've been using their cameras long before they cut the check, but I really wish all of this time I've had one of these brand new X5 360 cameras in my hand. Out here, there are no second takes. You either get the shot or it's gone. I'm not babying this thing either. These lenses are fully replaceable, so I'm not afraid to stick it out in the mess, even in hail like this. Two lenses, one on each side, so no matter where the chaos is, even if we're driving forward, the camera catches the chaos behind, like this stop sign whipping by. And did you notice how the giant selfie stick disappears? Poof, 
I have what looks like a drone, only cheaper, quieter, and it doesn't crash into power lines. The X5 has improved everything over the older models. A low light sensor that doesn't choke when the sun goes down, longer battery life, faster charging, and better sound. I've had it for a week. I've been able to use it in two real life storm chasing scenarios. And later on, you're gonna see how it compares in real time with the older model, the X4, while chasing a dangerous nighttime tornado. Oh my gosh, it just hit something. Continue, forward, forward. Most of the wreckage is brutal, but survivable. EF2, EF3, but just southwest of the school, the monster shows its teeth. Debris scattered like breadcrumbs downwind. Not just leveled, obliterated. The trees stripped bare, skinned alive. This wasn't just a storm, it was like a surgical strike through Hattiesburg. At the University of Southern Mississippi, the southern edge of campus took a direct hit. Six buildings battered, two just gone, wiped off the map like they were never there. Then it brushed the edge of downtown Hattiesburg, close enough to feel personal. Power lines tangled in the streets like spaghetti, homes shredded, Nobody's in there. She's out. not old shacks, solid places, Clear. places meant to last. EF2, EF3, on paper, that means significant damage. In real life, it means your house looks like it lost a fist fight with God. The tornado kept going across the Leaf River into Petal. Homes crushed, another town, another scar. Go, 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 go. 33 minutes, that's how long it was on the ground. 22 and a half miles of chaos, three quarters of a mile wide at its worst. Winds hit 170 miles an hour. That's not weather, that's war. 71 people were hurt and somehow, somebody hurt? Somehow, nobody died. Debris in the air. Since that day in 2013, this relatively small and ignored area has seen violent after violent EF2 and EF4 tornadoes that have passed through the Highway 98 corridor. Never, it's never hit here before. We've always got alerts and it's never hit here. A recent study in the Journal of Applied Meteorology and Climatology confirms what folks down here already know. Tornadoes right. could be shifting east. It's coming. The science is brutally simple. The Gulf is warming up. Warm water means more fuel, more moisture, more atmospheric gasoline for these violent engines of destruction. When that sticky Gulf air collides with cooler fronts from the north, it's like mixing tequila and bad decisions. The results are predictably catastrophic. Winters down here are warmer than they used to be, just a few degrees, but that's enough to load the atmosphere with more moisture, more fuel, more chaos. So now, even in January or February, you've got warm, sticky air pushing in from the Gulf and slamming into cooler air, sliding down from the north. That mix, instability, shear, lift, it's happening further east and more often, especially in the dead of winter, when most people think storm seasons still months away. Crackle. Out west in what we used to call Tornado Alley, something's gone quiet. Not silent, but less furious. And it's not because the storms have forgotten how to rage, it's because it seems the recipe's off. Until last year, Oklahoma hadn't seen an EF4 tornado since 2016. Tornadoes still happen in the plains. They always have, but they don't seem to cluster like they have down south. They don't haunt the same back roads year after year. Out here, tornadoes are a season, April to June. Predictable, almost polite. Down in Dixie Alley, they show up when they want. January, July, midnight. Easter Sunday. The storms down there don't follow a schedule, they just follow the fuel. In short, the fuel seems to be heading east, and southern Mississippi, it's sitting right at the crossroads of heat, moisture, wind shear, and danger. You can see it by the numbers. Tornado Alley's tornadoes peak in the spring, but are sparse the rest of the year, not in the south, where they spike when many others are worried about snow. 
Oh my gosh. I want to get the sound of it. It's going to go to my... Bood, Mississippi, December 28, 2024. Highway 98, where tornadoes just don't pass through. They keep coming back, like they've got something to saddle. The highway is sometimes the only clear view you can get of tornadoes through these piney forests. Unless it runs right over you and carves its own horrible path through the trees. A train, jet engine, the sound of violent vorticity ripping the world apart. For some, it's the last thing they'll ever hear. For others, it'll echo for the rest of their lives. That's all the roads and everything here, it's, it's the clip, everything blow down. Roofs gone, homes peeled open like sardine cans. Power stripped, the silence shattered. And once again, Mississippi found itself in the crosshairs of a storm with an EF3 tornado that doesn't care what month it is. How quick was it? Uh, the minute it was gone. Yeah. It was just that quick. Just days before the new year, on the ground for over 28 miles, it carved a path of damage 1,500 yards wide, somehow sparing the lives but leaving two injured. It's going to be okay. I need to get in. March 15, 2025, Tyler Town, Mississippi. There it is right there. A place most folks couldn't point to on a map until the sky decided to make an example of it. Twice. An EF-4 freight train with winds hitting 170 miles per hour. It touched down near Kentwood, Louisiana, then crossed the state line like it was settling a score. A storm with nothing but bad intentions. It was chewing up everything in its path. Homes, flattened trees, debarked. It was on the ground for a total of an hour and 20 minutes, traveling over 65 miles and killing five people. Less than an hour later, an EF3 tornado touched down just southwest of Tylertown, paralleling its bigger sister. Packing winds of 140 miles per hour, you can even see the scars they left behind from space. You see, Mississippi doesn't need much to light the fuse. Warm, sticky Gulf air is always on tap, even in the dead of winter or the dead of night. How much time did you have when the roar woke you up between the hit? Maybe a minute. And I was standing in the hallway and I just slid down the wall and, and you know, crunched up. There's a special kind of hell in a tornado that comes at night. You don't see it coming. You don't get the warning signs, just the sound. I heard like stuff booming. Booming, crashing. crashing, breaking, like like this, that noise, the, the trees, yeah. And by the time you hear it, it's already too close. It started coming. We heard it like, like a freight train. Like, uh oh. Then the winter started coming out. Then the trees started coming through. Everything started boom, 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 boom. Yeah. <laughs> January 1st, 2017, Hattiesburg. Again, a tornado touches down just after 3 a.m. and within minutes, the city's pulled into a waking nightmare. This was the bull in the living room, tearing through college campuses, churches, neighborhoods. While it was slightly weaker than the tornado that tore through in 2013, this EF3 was deadly. Four people killed, dozens hurt, over 1,200 buildings damaged or destroyed. In Dixie Alley, this is the norm. The storms don't always show up for a matinee. Why? Geography, mostly. Down here, more moist air from the Gulf is always lurking. And while those fast-moving storm systems barrel in from the west, they don't always wait for morning. They're nocturnal, fueled by instability that lingers long after dark. That's why Dixie tornadoes kill more people. You can see by the numbers. The Plains tornadoes prefer the magic hour right before dusk but down south, they wait for 2 a.m. Everyone's asleep, cell phones silenced, weather radios forgotten in a drawer, or they're so wrapped in rain, 
you never see them coming through the trees. And again, can you stand? You want to go back down? One of the biggest upgrades with the Insta360 X5, it actually sees in the dark. And out here, light is a luxury. Tornadoes don't always wait for the golden hour. Most of the time, you're chasing shadows in the flashing lightning. The X5 is rocking a 1 over 1.28 inch sensor. That's about one and a half times bigger than what came before. That means more light, less noise, and footage that doesn't fall apart when the sun dips out. It's almost night and day when you compare the X4 video versus the X5. Nothing's been altered here. The X5 managed to even capture a tornado that my eye initially missed. They also crammed in three AI chips to help clean things up, get rid of that noise in pure video mode, and yeah, it works. And in a first for 360 cameras, the X5 has a multi-layered steel mesh wind guard to eliminate wind noise. So I can come through loud and clear even the middle of a wind and dust storm like this. And I simply connect the Insta360 app where I can physically reframe the shot or just let AI do it. It's like directing after the fact. Total control, even in chaos. Thank you again to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. I have a link in my description where you can go and buy your own X5. If you follow that link, they're gonna throw in a free lens replacement kit with your order. Easter Sunday, April 12th, 2020. The world was already on edge, locked down, isolated, afraid. But in Southern Mississippi, something worse was brewing. The kind of fear that doesn't creep in. It barrels through your front door at 190 miles an hour. Just after 4 p.m., a tornado touched down in Watho County. It didn't ease into it. It came out swinging, gaining strength as it tore across the piney woods of Jefferson Davis and Covington counties. By the time it reached Bassfield, it was a monster. Two and a quarter miles wide. So big, it looked just like rain on the ground for nearly 68 miles. What it left behind wasn't damage, it was erasure. House completely slabbed, nothing with the foundation left. Homes were flattened, gone without a trace. Debarked trees, forest turned to mulch. Vehicles hurled into fields like kicked cans. 12 people died, more than 20 were injured. Each path here is more than a slash on a map lives changed in moments. Let's be clear, Tornado Alley still gets its share of monsters, those big cinematic storms that roar across the plains like something out of a Hollywood fever dream, but something has changed. This isn't just a shift in geography, it's a shift in vulnerability. And it's happening in places that can least afford it. It just went by really quick, but after it tore up a bunch of stuff. I assume it was extremely loud? Mm -hmm. Over the last decade, the storms have been drifting east into places packed tighter with people, into towns stitched together with trailers and a prayer. And down here, you don't need a monster to cause a massacre. Sure, I've talked about the big ones, winds screaming 190 miles an hour, but most of the storms that hit this stretch of the south, they're weaker on paper, just strong enough to destroy a home that was never meant to stand a chance. Oh my gosh, there's people injured. The storms haven't so changed we can't. just Stop. their aim we, we heard it about a freight train uh -oh. 